Hey there, good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Do Epic <laughs> Sean here in Venice. Um, but this uh, is an introduction to a special discussion that happened while I was visiting Noel Sanchez for his 55th birthday in San Francisco. We were watching The Last of the Dead and Company concerts. We were in Land of the Sun, a memorabilia shop there on Height Street, or Haight Street in San Francisco, when in the back of that shop, the great chronicler of the Grateful Dead, photographer Bob Minkin, was showing photographs from his trips with them in Amsterdam and Europe circa 1981 and later on in the United States 1982. Here uh, in the next seven minutes, um, Minkin discusses how you meet angels, this is quotes, you meet angels along the way who open up doors. And as you'll hear, an audience member asks him questions about his inspirations and how Minkin and other photographers like him became the audience's inspirations for their wonderlusts. So I was like, all right, the plan is now I'm going to go explore Amsterdam. Then I ran into this sort of group. What's the white one? And uh, that's me on the left. And uh, that's the kind of white in the middle there, David Berenger. I'm so friends with him. And the fellow to my left he actually became good friends with him. He stayed at my house. I stayed at his house. So that's Richard Russo. He passed away, unfortunately. He, uh, he wasn't Anyway, it was just like, the place only held 500 people. And they did an acoustic set, as you can see here. And they played uh, songs that they never played before. They broke out Love Light for the first time since Big Ten. So it was just all these weird things all happening in a small hash bar. Wow. So they played two nights. Gloria. Yeah, Gloria. Harley Gully. Harley Gully. They're playing instruments. They, their instruments were on roots, apps. So they had to buy, the Jerry had to buy that to play that day. Wow. The story I always heard where they would borrow, they were this, they were that. I finally asked Steve Parrish straight up, what's the deal with the guitars? And he wrote about it in my Jerry book, for myself. <laughs> he wrote about it, uh, he gave me you know, the whole interview about it because I wanted to know all the details. And they essentially bought me that book. It was really hot inside the place, as you can see. <laughs> Phil's glasses sit on his face. So this was in 81. I didn't go back to Amsterdam again until 2019. So here's, uh, I went back again with my wife. Who was, you know, she heard me talk about it for like 40 years. <laughs> so was that glass enclosure was there in, in 81. And that, that's the room that the dead played in. Wow. Just, you know, I walked in there, there was a guy there like, can I help you? I said, oh, I said, <laughs> so the guy said he worked there that night. Oh my God. My So we had some. I know, I know, I couldn't believe it. So he, <laughs> wow. so he's like, said, he goes, you want to see the room? I go, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he took us around. So this, this next one's really funny. So on the right is me leaning on this pole. Uh, in 1981, and there, there's the pole uh, in, 19, in 2019. So I'm looking at my position there. <laughs> And that's uh, the film, I kept the film in that canister so it was easy to get on you know, my camera strap. Was, was that so that was definitely true. After that, it was Paris and then Barcelona. And then I stayed in Europe for another three weeks. And, and your parents let you do all this because... Well, I was 22 at that point. Oh, all right. Yeah. Out of the house and you knew everything, right? <laughs> well, I knew how to travel around Europe at least. <laughs> right. No, but I mean, that's how we all were in yeah. our 20s. The, the wanderlust, that was just so yeah. amazing. It's... My kids are in their 20s now, so... Yeah. Well, you were the pioneer and made it possible for us to do this. And you being out there shooting photos made me want to go out and shoot photos just like, you know, you. One or two shows, I went out there, got front row, and, and I tell you, the, the thrill of doing that. Totally. It's hard to give that up and say, oh, you're so close to the energy, 
and it feels great and it, and it enlivens everything and you say wow it's just like busting out of the box and here we are. I better myself. <laughs> here, here we are. Because I, you know, I, I adored, you know, worship the photographer Jim Marshall and, you know, and Herbie Green and Baron Wollman and some of those uh, pioneers, you know. And I wanted to do what they did. I looked at magazines and stuff and be like, I want to do that. But, you know, wanting to do it and doing it are two different things. And, you know, it was a long process. And, you know, you meet angels along the way that open doors, you know, that break you through the next step. For me, I was like Dennis McNally. 1985, you know, introducing me, getting me into, so things like that that happen along the way, you know. Now more mundane things in Stoke, Norfolk, Virginia, a place that looks like a big you know, yeah. flying saucer. Classic. But it's great because, again, it was People's Express, you could fly down there, it was a weekend show, so you could just fly down, it was very cheap, you could stay overnight, all crash four or five of you in a hotel room, so let's go, you know. And then, um, so Jerry did, so Jerry did an acoustic solo. Well, he only did like he only played one show solo. Because after he did that solo show, which I was at, I mean, he looked like he had stage fright. He's like, <laughs> the rest of the tour, John Conn was out with him. And at this night, uh, Dr. John was the opening act. This is at the Beacon Theater. Somehow I wrangled myself a front row seat, and uh, Dr. John joined him for the encore. This was, you know. it's a brown one. It's great. It's great so Red Rocks was calling again. I had to go back. This is 1982. We did a three-night run, and did it rain? Yeah, it rained every night. But luckily, they didn't, they didn't move it inside. So I was lucky. So this is at the Chief Posey Camp Ground. That's me at Chief Posey Camp Ground. Yeah, little ragged, rough around the edges. And again, the film canisters. You know, film handy. Thank you all and do epic.